Welcome to uh, Wednesday night, Temple First Church, uh, to this rare occasion. Your, uh, your normal Wednesday night teacher is out this week, but I guarantee, I can almost guarantee he'll be back next week. So just bear with me patiently as we go through this, uh, this quick lesson. At the 1993 annual meeting of the American Heart Association in Atlanta, 300 doctors, nurses, and researchers came together to discuss, among other things, the importance of a low-fat diet in keeping our hearts healthy. Yet during meal times, they consumed fast food like bacon cheeseburgers and fries at about the same rate as the other people from other conventions. When one cardiologist was asked, whether or not his partaking in high-fat meals set a bad example, he replied, not me, I took my name tag off. We've all heard the term split personality, but have we ever thought about split character or having a facade? Today, I want to give you a preview of something that I might be working on for the summer. It's a series on the Sermon on the Mount. In the book of Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount is Jesus' initial address to the people. The Sermon on the Mount is all about the development of character. Character is defined as a distinguishing trait or quality or property. The mental or moral qualities distinctive to an individual, it's the various dimensions of personality, either natural or acquired, that distinguish one individual from another. As an ethical term, character refers to the traits of an individual that might be deemed morally blameworthy or praiseworthy. The term is often used in a positive sense to refer to the possessions of virtues that result in a person being praised as morally upright or believed to foster right actions. In classical ethics, Character was believed to be the product of the practice of some specific virtues or vices or the formation of moral habits. Contemporary ethics generally maintain that character also includes the capacity for intentional action or simply the ability to reason and choose, which in turn endows a person with moral and social responsibility for one's own actions. Christian ethics tends to look to Jesus as the standard for character and suggests that character stems from a life of faith and obedience to him and what he had taught. Jesus begins the sermon with a positive emphasis on righteous character and the blessings that it brings to the life of the believer. In the Beatitudes, Jesus described Christian character as coming from within. Character is revealed by our words, thoughts, and actions. Others can't always see your real character, but they can see some evidence of it. They see your honesty, your loyalty, your kindness, and your humility, or the lack thereof. We have to be careful not to confuse character with conduct. Conduct is what we do, Character is who we are. Conduct is the outside life. Character is the life that is unseen and hidden. Conduct is external, seen from the outside, while character is the internal that operates from within. In the economy of grace, conduct is the offspring of character, and character is the state of the heart. Conduct is its outward expressions. Or we can say, character is the root of the tree and conduct is the fruit it bears. 
Character is what you are on the inside where nobody sees you. It includes all your inner motives and attitudes no one else knows about. Character is the sum of all your inner values, motives, thoughts, and desires. It is the real you, the person that God knows perfectly. You don't even know your character as well as God does. After God and you, those close to you, know your character best. Christianity seeks to elevate, strengthen, and sanctify the moral qualities of man. It is our responsibility to accept the influence of the Holy Spirit. The beginning of a new moral course of life through the work of the Holy Spirit is often referred to as regeneration. And regeneration is the true foundation of Christian character. Even though character is a divine work of God, it requires an act of faith and some work on our part. A young, ambitious guy at Amico got a promotion that required him to move to Cairo. He went home all excited to his new wife and baby. Great news! We're moving to Cairo. Appalled, his wife said, You're moving alone. I'm going home to my mother. This was the first test of leadership in that family. There was no apparent compromise. If he gave up his promotion... He would resent his wife for ruining his career. But if she went along with the move, she would hate him for squashing the ideals for the baby and herself. What were they to do? They had a long discussion going back to the fundamentals, asking questions such as, Is this my career or ours? Is this baby yours or mine? Are we individuals? Or do we operate as a team? What are our values? The couple ended up going to Cairo, but not before their relationship had been transformed. She understood that his career was important to her, and he recommitted his values as a participant in the family. What matters is not what they ended up choosing, but how. They took the courageous step to redefine from the inside who they truly were. What are some of the questions you may need to ask? The truth is, before you can achieve anything worthwhile and fulfill your potential, you must develop character. True actions come from the motives that lie within us, and worthy motives arise from a solid character. Stephen Convey talks about the inside-out approach, by which he means good solutions, lasting arguments, arguments, and a happiness that endures all comes from inner greatness. The inside-out approach says that inside private victories come before public victories that making and keeping promises to yourself come before making and keeping promises to others. He goes on to say that it is futile to put personality before character, to try to improve relationships with others before improving ourselves. When God needed someone to carry out an assignment, he found the best person available at the time, Had we known some of these individuals, we may have questioned some of his choices. Gideon himself wondered why God had chosen him as he trembled and thrashed wheat in the wine press, hoping to hide from the dreaded Midianites. He viewed himself as the weakest member of the weakest clan of Israel. Jeremiah protested he was only a child and didn't know how to speak when God called him to be a prophet. But God strengthened him like a fortified city, an iron pillar, or a bronze wall. Asaph wrote a psalm in which he described David's qualifications to be God's man. He inscribed the fact that God chose David, his servants, from the sheep's pens, 
From tending sheep, he brought him to the shepherd of his people. Before David was a leader, he was a servant. The youngest son of Jesse served in a remote place. Apparently, God knew that David's shepherd heart would serve him well when given the opportunity to to shepherd his people. David was a person of character. He led Israel with integrity. Integrity is a, he comes from a Hebrew word meaning soundness, simplicity, and uprightness. A word, another word for character comes from a Greek word meaning chisel. We don't possess character from birth like we do fingerprints. We have to chisel character out of the raw circumstances that life throws through us. A man told a story of a nurse working in a clinic when a young mother came in with her 18-month-old son. He needed his final shot for routine immunization, and she needed a physical. Both patients and the nurse, Jenna, were new to the clinic. Jenna gave the boy his shot, and his mother took him back to the waiting room to his sister and grandmother. The mother went back for her physical, When Jenna went to record the vaccination on the boy's chart, she noticed that the seal on the vial in her lab coat was unbroken. Quickly, Jenna realized she gave the boy the wrong vaccine. She gasped when she realized her mistake. Here is the sequence of thoughts that followed. No one will ever know. No harm done. I can't tell the doctor. This is my first day on the job. The doctor will think I'm incompetent. It can't hurt the boy, can it? It doesn't hurt to be immunized twice for the same shot. But he needs the right vaccine. What will the mother say? But I will know, and so will God. Following Jesus is often cast as a series of big things. The big decision to be more committed. The big decision to forsake all and to become a missionary. The big decision to become a pastor. The big decision to do big things for God. Yet the real battles, the real battles are often fought internally in quick, quickly passing moments. When the doctor walked out of the room, Jenna told him her mistake. After a few minutes, he walked back in the room, told the mother what had happened, and asked her to reschedule another time for the child's immunization. Jenna's anxiety was released. She was now free. The most well-known list of character traits is the ninefold list in Galatians 5, 22 through 23. It's not mere moral or legal correctness, but the manifestation of the nine graces. Love, joy, and peace are characteristics of an inward state. Long-suffering, gentleness, and goodness are the character traits we exhibit towards others. Faith, meekness, and temperance are the character traits that are expressed towards God. Other lists can be found in Colossians 3, 12 through 16, Ephesians 4, 2 and 3 and 32, James 3, 17, and 2 Peter 1, 5 through 7. I want to leave you with a couple of questions to think about. Since character development comes from making the right decisions, often on little matters, think about one or two decisions you recently faced or may face in the next few days that will help shape your character. Think about something that you used to struggle with that has become pretty much a habit of obedience for you. And I pray that God will use this to help develop and mature your character. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, 
We'd like to thank you for, for today, Lord. We'd like to thank you for the gifts that you had given each one of us today, whether we recognize them or not. And Lord, we just pray that as we go into tomorrow, Lord, that you will help develop and mature us more and draw us more into your ways. Oh Lord, we lift up this nation and the new leadership. And Father, we just pray that you would lay your hands upon those taken over, that you would lead and guide them, and that you would direct their paths as well. And Lord, we just lift up all the prayer requests each one of us has, those that we have shared and those that we have kept silent. And Father, we just ask that you would answer those requests according to your will and to your purpose for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next week or somebody else. Thank you.